Hi, this is Brian Dar, and today I'm going to show how I use Trello to manage personal tasks at work and at home. So Trello is made up of boards, which have lists, which have cards in them. And if I come up to the starred thing, you can see that I have a couple of different boards. I've got a work board for work to do's, a personal board, uh, a board that I share with my partner, and then a couple of other projects that I'm working on. On my work boards and on my personal boards, I have a couple of lists which I use. So the first list is inbox, uh, then it's urgent, not urgent, waiting, slash requested, and notes. So some of how I use this is based on Getting Things Done, which is a book by David Allen. Some of it is just ways that I found that work for me. Um, I tend to have fairly high anxiety when it comes to lists, actually, when I have long lists that have things that aren't sorted. Um, I just start to worry about what fires are going on and you know, what things do I need to worry about. So uh, this is the system that I found that helps me the most. Um, but continuing on a little bit about the way that Trello works. So in each list, you can add a card. And the card has a title. And you can keep adding more cards there if you want. And if you copy a list, it, it will actually, uh, I'm sorry, if you paste a list, it'll actually make a bunch of cards, which is quite helpful. Um, actually, you'll probably find a lot of really helpful little surprising features in Trello. Once you click into a card, though, you have the title, you have a description, you have comments. You can add other people to this card if they're members on the board, so you can collaborate. You can add labels on this, and you can give these labels um, titles such as scheduled. Um, oops, sorry. How do I do this? Uh, yeah, scheduled. Yeah, so that, uh, that helps too. Uh, you can add a checklist to a specific item, so thing one thing too, and then you can check those off as you go, and you can hide checked items if you'd like. You can also add due dates, you can add attachments, um, you can add a cover t uh, picture to the card if you want, but mostly I find just you know having the cards, the, the uh, title, and the description are enough. Um, one thing that I find incredibly helpful, moving away from Trello for just a moment, is the way that I use Trello with email. So very frequently, people use email also as a to-do list. And if you follow something called Inbox Zero, which is a sort of a framework for doing email created by a, man, by a guy named Merlin Mann, um, he says that there are four things you should do with email whenever you look at them. You should either do it right away, delete it, delegate it to somebody else, or put it on a to-do list because your inbox is not a to-do list. So over here, um, I, I use Gmail at work and at home. So let's say that this is an email that's an important thing that I need to follow up on. Rather than leaving it in my inbox, I can grab this link. I can come over. I can drop it into the description of my card. And then I can go ahead and archive this, this email. Then when I want to actually do it in the appropriate order, now that it's been prioritized with all my other work, I can come in here, I can click on this link, and it will take me right to that particular email. So I find that an incredibly helpful way to, to merge doing personal tasks along with email. All right, I'm done with that. All right, so how do I use this? Well, the inbox, uh, which is a very getting things done kind of idea, is the place that you drop everything into that is not yet sorted. You're on the way to a meeting and somebody sends you a chat and says, hey, can you do this form? Great, drop that in the inbox. You're in the middle of a meeting and someone says a, a couple of action items, fantastic, drop it in the inbox. Just keep adding cards. Then periodically, you'll want to move those and you know, properly, pri um, properly prioritize them. So you can drag them over into the appropriate list. Um, for me, I also mix a little bit of what's called the Eisenhower decision matrix. Actually, let me find a picture of that. There we go. So basically, in the, in the Eisenhower decision matrix, you categorize things according to um, important, not important, urgent, and not urgent. I find in general that I never put anything unimportant on my Trello list, so I don't actually have to worry about this lower category at all. But I do wind up really needing to differentiate between urgent and not urgent. And this is what really helps reduce any anxiety that I have with lists. So if it's in the urgent column, to me, there is some sort of timely deadline that I need to get this thing done. 
Uh, and if it's in, in the not urgent column, it is still important and it still should be done, but I can prioritize those appropriately as well. One of the principles of the Eisenhower decision matrix is that you generally want to try to spend most of your time over here in the important and not urgent category. This is things like exercise, relationship activities, um, long-term growth opportunities, things like that. Um, if you don't spend enough time over here in what they call quadrant two, these will eventually move over to urgent um, and then you might feel that pressure of having things stacking up. For me, I find it very helpful to have urgent separated because whenever there is a bunch of things in urgent, I know exactly what I have to do next. And once that's empty, then I can come and turn to the non-urgent pile. One thing you can do is you, you can also add due dates to these cards. So let's say that I know this one's due next Friday at 12 o'clock. I now have a due date showing up. Um, and then this will start turning colors as it gets closer and closer to that. Now, let's say that uh, I'm a manager or, um, or I put something on my calendar. Well, I, let's go with the manager example first. Um, if I've asked someone else to do something, but it's still important to me that it gets done, I'll move it over here into waiting requested. And I will typically add a name, uh, let's say Bob. And then uh, I know to check back in with Bob at a certain time on this. This is nice because it just sits there with me not really paying much attention to it until every once in a while I look over and I think, oh yeah, whatever happened to that thing? But uh, combining that with due dates will, will make it pop more as well. Uh, conversely, if there's something that's important for me to do, but I can't do it yet, I'll put it over there. Um, for example, my car is out getting some body work and I can't get it to an emissions inspection yet. Um, that's a real thing right now. Uh, or if I have something on a calendar I will either remove the card because I know it's on a calendar and it really only needs to be in one place. Or if it's extremely important and I really do need to follow up with it, I'll put it on a calendar and also drop it into waiting requested. Because I'm in this board a lot, I also have a note section. Um, you, you, you may or may not want this kind of column. Maybe you use Evernote or Google Keep or Google Docs or, or some other note taking function. Um, so you may not want to have that section over there. So that's pretty much it. Basically drop everything into an inbox, periodically set aside some time to, uh, to appropriately categorize it between urgent, not urgent, and then prioritize it vertically. Let me add a, an, another couple cards just to show you what they look like. Oops, I actually added a label with a shortcut there. We don't need that. By the way, uh, with your labels, if you click here, you can, you can expand them to, to, to show what they are. But so, so let's say that I have a bunch of stuff sitting in inbox. I'll periodically spend time dropping it into the appropriate places, recategorize them relative to each other. Um, that, yeah, that's really about it. Something that I do find helpful, if you put three dashes in a card or, or more than three dashes, I usually leave this little list separator up here. And then as I'm planning my, my day or my week or my hour, uh, I'll work through the urgent stuff first. And once all, once all the urgent stuff is done, I'll come over to the, to the non-urgent pile. But I find it helpful to, to note what I'm gonna work on during this work session, whatever that means, this weekend, today, next, next hour. And I'll use this card to drag down and show these are the things that I'm working on next. When you're done with things, what you can do is you can um, you know, drag them into a done column if you want. I tend to just archive them by clicking here and then scrolling down and clicking archive. I also love shortcuts. So really what I do is I hover over and I press C, which is archive. You can also get Trello on mobile, which is extremely helpful. Uh, to archive on that, you just hold down on a card and drag it up and that will archive it as well. Um, and I find the mobile aspect of this really helpful because you can sit in meetings, quickly take some notes, drop them in the, drop them in the inbox, and then move forward. You can use this tool with Teams. Uh, we also use it a lot with, uh, um, sometimes at work, sometimes personally, to collaborate on work. Being able to drop um, attachments, links to Google Docs, links to other files, really makes this possible. Um, when working with teams, typically we do columns that are called to do, in progress, done. Maybe we add a backlog column that is before to do. 
It's also helpful to have a column that has a card that says how to use this board if you're doing it with a collaboration. Um, if you're using, if, you're, if your teams need a more restricted workflow, there's other tools that would work better than Trello. Uh, Jira is one of them where you can build workflows and track all kinds of work for much larger teams. But this is how I use it personally and I find it very helpful. Please let me know if, if you have any questions and thank you very much for watching.